So the management of Medexon 14 skipping mutations is still pretty new. The alteration itself was identified in the early 2000s, actually, but it's been a focus of, of research and targeting only really since around 2014, 2015, when um, our group, among others, had sort of first reported um, the fact that we could treat these patients with, back then it was crizotinib as, as a med inhibitor. Um, and so these trials uh, emerged very, very quickly across different companies um, around 2015. And then the results really started coming out a few years afterwards, which I think is fairly impressive in terms of these global, global efforts, because the incidence of this alteration, I think, as you had touched on, is about three to four percent. So it is a fairly uncommon alteration that does require, at the end of the day, for most settings, in most settings, next generation sequencing to identify. It is a somewhat complicated alteration uh, at the end of the day. And so because of that, because its identification has been relatively new, we also don't have a lot of prospective data on how to manage this particular subset of patients because they were not being identified uh, back when the pivotal uh, first-line trials, for example, for immunotherapy-based regimens were, were being done. So these patients were screened out for things like EGFR and ELK, but no one really was aware or taking a look at Medexon 14 skipping. So we don't know how, those, how these patients actually prospectively respond to immunotherapy-based treatment. In addition, what's become evident across the different studies targeting this population is that these patients are older than the average lung cancer patients. The median age is between 72 to 74. So many of these patients are in their mid to late 80s. Um, and so treating them requires a sort of special degree of finesse and consideration given their age. And again, these patients age-wise tend not to be reflected in normal randomized phase three trials. Um, it's rare to have a patient sort of in their mid to late 70s even reflecting these trials. So, um, and so we don't know very much uh, about the ideal way to manage these patients. And yet I think the theme um, or the, you know, for, for this is similar to what we've seen before, which is if you have an actionable oncogenic alteration, the preferred treatment usually is the directed therapy. Um, so in this case, MET-directed therapy to treat these patients, just like in other settings, um, as with ALK, for instance, as you mentioned, the, the preferred uh, treatment for these patients is ALK-directed therapy over chemotherapy and immunotherapy. So that's sort of in a nutshell. There's a, a fair bit of complexity within that, but I think I'll sort of end the summary there.